Hi guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. It's the latest of our video calls. We've been chatting with everybody while we're all at home at the minute. I'm delighted to say Mr. Charlie Simpson's on the line. How are you, man? Howdy, I'm good, mate. You well? Not too bad. Surviving in this very, very odd time we find ourselves in. What a strange, what a strange life we're living at the moment. What odd, odd year, man. Well, I'll start this out in the same way we've started all these, which is to say, you know, hope you and the family and all your friends and loved ones, you know, you're keeping safe and well. How have you kind of been occupying your time these these last few months at home? Um, so I've pretty much built a brand new recording studio, which I'm very excited about. Um, I basically, before I went to lock, before lockdown started, I was due to start... Um, recording a solo record that I've been writing for the last sort of uh, 12 to 18 months. And um, and basically everything was, the studio was booked, everything was was done and literally it was about two weeks before we were about to start and um, the, the, the pandemic hit. So I was just sat, um, I was sat at home and I just started sort of recording myself and um, working with another guy. And you know that, the band, The Postal Service? Of course. Yeah, they made that first record, um, literally, like, sending stuff to each other. I mean, I think they did it through the mail, but we we did it sort of through email and yeah. just sent sessions to each other. And and we ended up sort of co-producing the first song, you know, just in our own rooms. And I thought, well, that's cool. And so then we did another one like that. And then we did another one like that. And I was like, okay, this is, um, this is good. And, I, and then I thought to myself, do you know what? I'm just going to... I'm just going to go for it and build a full blown studio. So then I started designing like a, um, you know, pr proper studio. And basically I wanted to get to the point where I don't have to rent commercial spaces anymore and I can just do everything from my own space. And, um, you know, I've really got into the production side of stuff now. So I'm sort of starting to self produce, which is something I've wanted to do for years. So, I mean, this obviously has been an awful, awful situation, but, um, you know, I'm just trying to grab hold of the positives and um, sort of make myself as self-sufficient as possible. Yeah, I think that's what everyone's been trying to do on various levels, you know, no matter how established they are, no matter how long they've been going, just finding ways to actually get around the fact that, yeah, we can't often be in the same room as each other. That's got to be really kind of freeing in a way to just uh, be doing it off your own back like that. Oh, 100%. I mean, I mean, it really is the kind of thing that, um, you know, I've, I've always dreamed of doing. And, you know, there was, it's a lot of, it's a lot of work to go through to get it to the point where you can, you know, have a setup that can you, you can record stuff well enough to release. Because obviously, um, you know, I, I've been used to just doing sort of writing demos and then I'll go into a proper studio and and all that. So, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of work to get to this point, but um, I'm just super happy with it, man. And um, as you say, I mean, in this evolving world, um, you know, we don't even, I mean, the, the music industry is evolving at such a fast rate as well as everything else. And, you know, now that everything's sort of based around streaming, um, you know, I can have a song finished and then get it mastered and then it can be out the next week. I mean, it's it's really awesome. And, you know, we don't, we don't print CDs anymore. And for all that, you know, I've been for the last five years, I've been sort of up and down in my mind of, oh, you know, the music industry is getting ruined and it's not like it was. And, it's and, and you know, it's, it's easy for someone that's been doing it for a long time to sort of have roast into glasses. But at the end of the day, there is so many positives that you can grab hold of with the modern music industry. And the fact that you can get, have direct to, uh, direct to fan access very easily and that you can put music out very quickly is actually brilliant. So I'm, I'm super pumped, man. I'm really excited about the future. No, that's great to hear, man. It's so funny, actually, the amount of conversations I've had over this this last year with people where they've they've suddenly clicked in. It's it's funny how rock was almost the final genre to click into that idea of, yeah, oh, it doesn't definitely. have to just be album and, and four singles from it, and then we do the cycle yeah. again. Put music out as much as you want now. Yeah, and I, th and I think that's really cool because, like, it's much more freeing in the fact that, you know, you can still create a body of work at the end of a cycle, but I feel like doing, I mean, my plan is to, is to do more sort of release track by track, um, you know, and then put, you know, probably package an album at the end of that. But um, yeah, man, I don't know. It's like, there's just no rules anymore. I mean, it's funny. Like I was thinking about this the other day, like when Fight Star first came out, you know, it, you know, it was an incredibly different space. You had your you know, genres very much carved in stone and, you know, you couldn't mix. I mean, the idea of someone sort of, I listened to the Machine Gun, really, Machine Gun Kelly record the other day and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was absolutely cool, it? brilliant. It's very cool. And, I, and I, was just, I was, I can't remember the name of the song, but I was listening to it on the train into London. I was like, it was like heavy punk rock and then it suddenly went into a trap beat and I was like, you just wouldn't have been able to do that 10 years ago. I mean, this wouldn't have been allowed that you, you would have been lambasted for doing that. And now everyone's like, yeah, man, it's awesome. So I feel like the rules have gone 
the, 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 the lines between genres are blurring and it's like, it's a very freeing time. So it's like, you can just make whatever you want and it's awesome. Yeah, no, no, it's so good to hear. And, and, and let's speak on that then, because of course, you know, we've got that first taste of what you've been working on, what you've been cooking up. First solo album for a minute, actually. And, and like you say, you were kind of ready for it before this year all kicked in. What made you decide, right, next up is the solo record. I'm going back and doing some of that. Um, I think, I don't know, man. I think that I, I just started writing some songs. Um, so sort of tail end of, where are we now? Tail end of 2019. And I'd, I'd, for a while, I'd wanted to sort of strip everything away um, and do something on my on my own, which wasn't because the, my last solo incarnation, which I loved, was more sort of folky and band driven, and I had like a big five six piece band. And while it was great, I feel like I sort of hid behind that in a way, you know. And I and I, I kind of wanted to just put myself in the most uncomfortable position, and the most uncomfortable position is just to put up a mic and a piano and just sing. And it's like there's nothing to hide from then you know there's nowhere you, you're you're your most exposed and i feel like that was an exciting challenge for me so a lot of the new stuff is very um very stripped back i mean there is some more sort of production heavy stuff that i'm working on but in general i just wanted to sort of strip away the layers and just make it very pure and very um sort of uh yeah just very very stripped really yeah, we can hear that certainly on the single because uh, at the time of recording, we've heard I See You. That's obviously out there in the world now. And yeah, it, it is interesting how it's it's obviously it's still your voice and it's still very distinctively going to sound like you in that way. But like you say, playing in new territories and that's something that I think, you know, we can always admire about yourself, you know, whether it's across the many different groups you've been a part of or even the solo material, you don't like to stay in one place very often, do you? I'm, I'm, I'm tearing up my rap album, man. That's my next, my next venture. <laughs> That's Here it comes. Um, no, I mean, yeah, it's, that's the thing. Like, and I, and what I'm so grateful for is I feel like over the last 20 years, I've built a fan base that accepts anything that, that I choose to do. And I think I think my my biggest thing is that you know I always want what I do to be to be good, and I want to love it, and I want to love it. That's that's the most important barrier that I have. Like, when I release something, whether or not someone likes it or not is is not at the top of my agenda. It's do I love it? Um, you know, can you hang your coat on it? You know, that kind of thing. And, and I think that, but what's interesting is that, you know, obviously I see people on, on Instagram and on Twitter and stuff being like, oh, you know, if I was doing Busted, they'd be like, oh, I want to hear a Five Star album or I want to hear a solo record. And, you know, you can't please everyone, but the, but no one's ever like sort of fuck you, man. Like, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's always sort of respectful and I'm really appreciative of that. So I feel like people wouldn't be shocked if I did do a rap album. I mean, I'm not going to do one, but do you know, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's like, I feel like people have sort of um, allowed me that creative freedom to, to, do the, to do these different things. And I'd like to take that further. I mean, I've, I'm cooking up a couple of project ideas with some friends that I'm, I'm super pumped about. Um, and that will be different again. And it's just, um, yeah, it's, it, music is an incredibly expansive art and there's so much that can be had from it, you know? So why yeah. just, why just pigeonhole it into one area? Oh, absolutely. And I'm definitely saving that quote of you saying you're never doing a rap album. We'll bring that back out in maybe 10 years or something. <laughs> just make sure make sure it's saved there. We'll make sure that one for the future. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, own label this time as well? Yes. Like proper self-releasing stuff. That's got to be really exciting. Yeah, so that's another thing that, again, in the changing world, um, you know, there's, there's lots of opportunities for that. And, and for me, I feel like because I've been doing this quite a long time, I sort of know the way it all works. And, and for me, I, I, I like to keep creative control and I'm working with a fantastic distributor and, you know, it just works for me. And I think a lot of other, a lot of artists are going that way. Um, and I just think it's the new sort of model because major labels can't, you know, they can't offer you what they used to be able to offer you because the, the industry's changed. So it's like, apart from being a big bank, basically, you know, it's like, and you know, I'm not, I'm not dissing major labels. I think that they, that there is, uh, you know, there is uh, absolutely um, positives for signing to a major for the right artist. And I wouldn't say, I wouldn't discourage anyone from doing that, but for someone with a fan base and for someone um, that sort of knows the ropes, I, I feel like the independent route is just is a better, better fit for me. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. And I guess I imagine, like you say, you know, already thinking about what you're going to do next with other people and other kind of collabs and stuff like that that's got to really open up your options with that already. The world really is your oyster, not just in terms of music you want to make, but when you release it, who you do it with, how you want to do it. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, and I think that's the thing. I think that the problem, I think the other problem with being, um, you know, on big labels 
is the fact that they obviously pump a lot of money in and you have to meet their bottom line. And so it, it's very much like you can't take things at your own pace because it's, it's you know, you're going to have to, they will check their statements, you know, their quarterly statements and you have to be hitting a certain threshold, you know, for the amount of money they put in. And, and I just, all that stuff is just a pressure on the creative process that I don't like. So for me, it's like, I would much rather put my own money into it and, and pay for it all myself and, and have full creative control because then everything else is sort of relaxed and I can, I can sort of, um, you know, I can, I can concentrate on the things that I love, which is making music. I mean, that's, what, that's the only thing that really matters. You know what I mean? It's like that I get to a point where I'm able to express myself artistically and not have to worry about, I mean, even the business side of it, I hate like you're going into, going into meetings and talking about all that stuff. It's like, do you know what? I just, I'd rather not just leave that to other people, you know? Yeah, you're, you're the boss of your own boardroom now. It's all yeah, good. Exactly. That's fine. You could just sit there, yeah. have your own board meeting. <laughs> Absolutely done. It's all good. Uh, and like I say, yeah, the singles out there, I take it, like you say, you know, you're wanting to play with that kind of more piano sound, have the vocals very much at the forefront. Is that what we can expect from the rest of this record when it comes Yeah, it is. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a constantly evolving thing, to be honest. I mean, um, you know, we've got the next song ready to go, um, which will be coming out um, relatively uh, shortly so and then from then on I haven't really picked my, my sort of main, main singles after that but um, yeah I, to be honest I, you know I've, I, I've, I wrote like 20 songs 25 songs um, and there is a sort of pattern to that but then I'm coming up with new ideas all the time and and that's another cool thing about being able to do you know running my own label it's like oh do you know what I think I'm going to release this one instead which is a brand new song so yeah it's cool man I mean it's a it feels weird because it's definitely a different um you know, it's a different atmosphere and it's a different way of working, but it's something I'm fully embracing and something I'm super excited about. Yeah, no, it's good to see you hyped up for it, man. No, it's exciting to see what kind of comes next. Um, loads I want to talk to you about as well. Let's. I want to dive back a little bit, actually, to some of your other work, because um, last time we kind of ran into you, uh, was Slam Dunk last year, where you, yes. course, you were there with the Busted Boys. Yes. And what a great, great day that was. And, and you know, you were the surprise guest on that lineup. I watched the set at Leeds. The crowd absolutely lost it. Yeah. Um, what was it like playing that festival with that? Because, you know, Busted, again, like you say, the genres are blended and everything these days. I think it was fair to say you were going to get a friendly response in that festival, but it's yeah. not the kind of place you would have played with Busted before. What oh, was it like? Not. I mean, it's the kind of place we would have avoided like the plague 20 years ago. Um, <laughs> but I mean... I, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought the vibe was going to be good. The, you know, Slam Dunk asked for us to do the slot and I'd played Slam Dunk before. Um, actually, I think I'd done it twice. I think I did it with Fight Star and I did it um, acoustic. Um, I did it acoustically. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it was just a really fun day, man. I mean, Slam Dunk is a great festival. And the thing is that those kind of festivals with those kind of lineups are becoming few and far between, sadly. And I think that, that is a sort of it's it, I when I look at the Slam Dunk lineup every year, I'm always like, they get it so right, man. Like they 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 have some great bands play, and it, the crowd went off, man. It was like and because it, it was a similar vibe like Busted did, um, like one of the sort of secret tents at Glastonbury the year before, and the, and that like they basically had to shut the entire area off because there were so many people. So yeah, man, like festivals, and again, Glastonbury is not something we would have played 20 years ago. So it's 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 amazing to see how the sort of um, you know, things have shifted and um, yeah, it's great, man. I love it. I love festivals in general. Yeah, absolutely. It must have surprised you, I guess, a little bit as well. Like the, I mean, it was such a great reception to that last positive record as well. And it, I know you kind of, you'd cited before around the record before that, where we chatted, you know, you guys wanted to try different sounds out and everything, I think very successfully. And it went down with that fan base really, really well. But this was a proper return to that old school sound of Busted and really playing in that pop punk territory yeah. again. I mean, for me, this last record was like the record that I'd always you know, wanted Busted to make, you know, I, I think Night Driver, when I went back, like I, we knew that we wanted to do something different and we, we wanted to throw a real curveball. And I remember we went out to LA to, to, to record the record and um, we just started writing these sort of 80s jams. And I remember thinking people are just going to be like, what, how is that, what? Um, and, and it surprised a lot of people, but I, I think Night Driver is, an, is a great record, man. I think it's a brilliant pop album and I really love it. So um, that was cool. And then we were discussing the next one we, we kind of thought, well, you know, why don't we... Um, Gil Norton came to came into the conversation very early and he's an incredible producer, um, you know, sort of UK rock royalty. And um, and we sort of thought, you know, if we if we make sort of a pop punk record, then he would be a great guy to steer the ship. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I was 
really happy with the way that record turned out as well. And I feel like it was a sort of um, real stamp of, you know, this is what this is what it's all about, you know, so it was cool. Yeah. Yeah, very, very cool moment for you guys. And again, just talk about all this myriad of work you've done in the past and it's all coming back together. I can't believe this. This makes me feel old, man. Next year, we're coming up on March, 15 years since Grand Unification. Really? That's insane. I look up today, March, mate. That's absolutely mad. That is, that is nuts. It makes me feel old. That's I mean, I know, right? Full on. It's um, absolutely crazy. That's nuts, but, man. Yeah, I mean... Wow, that's crazy. That that record is a will always hold a very special place in my heart. It was like a it will always be a sort of seminal record in my career. Um, you know, and 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 the crazy thing is like yeah, you know, the like people really connected with that record. I mean, I, I all, all all the time I meet people and they're like, man, that album like really um, sort of really puts a pinpoint in a point in someone's youth. You know, like people say, oh, I grew up and that was like. Um, you know, I remember Ed Sheeran was like said to me like, "Oh man, that um, this, uh, second fighter album that was like the soundtrack to my summer man when I was 16. And I was like, "Really?" Um, so yeah, it, it, it just if if oh, sorry, I've just got S- Siri's gone off. <laughs> <laughs> Siri, play fight star. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Um, yeah um, I, I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I just feel like there's a real warmth for those records and a real warmth among the fan base. So. Um, I can't believe that's been 15 years, man. That's nuts. Isn't that absolutely wild? No, it's so, so crazy. And again, I guess that's the kind of nice thing that you found yourself at this point in your career, that yes, you can put out solo stuff when you want and on your own terms. Yes, you can go back with the busted lads when you guys want and when you guys feel like there's a, there's a moment to do that. Is it the same with Fight Star? Do you feel like eventually you might, I mean, I mean, obviously no plans in terms of this year or whatever. I know it's yeah. all kind of crazy, but I guess it must be kind of a similar thing. You guys seem to just it be is, able man. to dip in when you want. It is like, um, obviously, you know, we, it needs to be the time where all of us can do it. You know, Dan and Al have got the gunship thing going on. And of course. I, know. I said this the other day, like, sometimes I'll just get my seven string out. Look, it's just uh, on the wall. Look, it's just, it just, it stares at me, my Steph Carpenter seven string. And oh, uh, there it and, is. There it is. And, uh, and sometimes I just look at it thinking, oh, I'm going to write some really sludgy, filthy riffs today. So, um, yeah, man, I just get that out and I just sort of bank a lot of, a lot of that stuff. And that's really fun. Um, but I mean, the last Five Star album was actually my favourite Five Star album. So oh, really? I feel like that. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of progression with that. And um, and as I say, there are some other projects, sort of that I've got my eye on at some point. It's just it's finding the time to do it all, you know. Oh, of course it is. Of course it is. What well, do you think? Those other projects are they in a similar kind of vein to Five Star? Are you indulging possibly. that side of yourself? Possibly, possibly, possibly. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it's just maybe. I'm not going to say anything. All maybe. right, um, all right. Interesting. Yeah, no, it's, it's good, man. Like I feel like. I feel like, you know, I'm very close with the guys still. And um, at some point when it's very much when the time is right kind of thing. You know? No, of course. No, it's nice to see that there's that there is that freedom should it arise. You know, that's kind of a cool thing. Always nice to see that. Um, other stuff I wanted to mention. I hadn't quite clocked this at the time, but um, little bits of writing work here and there with other people as well and doing little bits of stuff for other people. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Did you work on a bullet for my Valentine track as well on yes. that last record? Right. I mean, I completely missed that at the time. That's really, really interesting because that record went so great for them. And I've chatted to Matt quite a few times around that yeah. campaign. It was Breathe Underwater, wasn't it? How yeah. did you end up writing with those guys? Um, well, Matt just, Matt just, um, I mean, I've been friends with Matt for a long time. I've been friends with Matt since Five Star started because Five Star and Bullet for My Valentine sort of started at the same time. And we would sort of see each other on the circuit and, um, and yeah, I, I remain friends with him and they're all awesome guys. And he he just had, he was writing the song and he, he just um, sort of played it to me and was like, oh, I think, you know, it'd be great if we could we could do this one together because like, you know, I think you could bring something really cool to it. So we just, um, yeah, we wrote it together. And that's actually, I really love the song. I think it's really great. It's very, it's a di- it's very different from Up for Bullet by Valentine. Um, but uh, yeah, man, it's uh, it's great. I, it's really fun working for other people. Like I, I don't do as much as I'd like because I just don't, um, usually have the time but but i definitely something i would like to do more of in the future if people want to collaborate then that'd be great yeah i guess as well with uh with bullet i think especially around that record they were very much of a similar mindset to yourself of like well we can do whatever we want now let's just try new things and see what happens which is a really cool way to be a really good mindset to have i imagine like that actual recording process especially when you're friends with someone like that it's got to be a blast right oh so fun man that's what i mean any any collaborative sort of endeavor that you you can have with your friends is always fun man and it's like um yeah i mean i i've i've done it a few times i mean, i did a i did a um collaboration with this is menace um with jason who drums for bullet now actually got me involved in that and um 
and that was a really fun project and I've done other bits and bobs but yeah and also it's like you sort of step into someone else's house you know it's like okay I'm, you're sort of guest on another thing and so it's a it's a very different perspective to your own work you know because you're you're sort of a guest on someone else's thing so that's uh, you know a bit of a different mindset but really fun yeah cool cool man well i'll leave you with this then charlie what kind of is next on the itinerary for you we're very much in solo mode at the moment we've yes. got you know more music to come more singles going to be coming presumably and all that kind of stuff how do you see all the other stuff working around it? i know everyone's done a live stream show at this point i know everyone's trying to find ways to yeah. Del be deliver beyond the music have you thought about how that might work yet um are we i have fun enough we have been uh talking just last week about the idea of possibly doing uh some sort of performance um online i mean I, who knows when live shows will happen again it's just so i'm just so, i'm so sad for our not just for, for for the musicians but for all my friends that are cr the crew who are just you know have really been hit hard by this that sucks um but yeah, I mean, I'm definitely up for doing something. Um, I, I just want it to be, I want it to be really cool if I do. I don't want to just do it the same as everyone's doing it. Do you know what I mean? I, I want to make it really special. And we have had a couple of ideas of how to do, um, you know, a live thing, but we'll, we'll wait and see. And then hopefully, hopefully by this time next year, we'll be playing live again. But at the moment, as I say, very much focused on my solo stuff. I've got some really uh, awesome songs coming out um, over the next uh, six months or so. So yeah, just keep, keep on listening, keep on streaming and um, look forward to seeing everyone when I'm back out on the road, man. Absolutely, man. No, we look forward to seeing you out on the road for sure. And in terms of, uh, let's leave you with this, shall we? All these live stream things and everything. Anyone you've particularly enjoyed recently? I've loved how everyone's been so different. Who have you checked out and gone, oh yeah, that's that's a great achievement, that. For, for what, sorry? Watching other people's live stream shows. Is there anyone in particular you've watched? Of well, no, there's one. I really stream? wanted to see the Machine Gun Kelly one and I missed it annoyingly. But I, did you see that one? I saw bits of it. Yeah, I've seen a fair few highlights. So there were some individual tracks floating around. It was very cool. I mean, I mean, it's the Roxy. What a <laughs> that's what I mean because I mean that's what I mean for me. Oh, and actually, um, Def Vanna did some did something. Yeah, James did a thing in the church, didn't they? Which pretty great. cool. Um, so yeah, as, as I say, that's 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 what I'd like to do. Something that's a bit different. You know what I mean? Not just sitting in your bedroom playing the guitar. Like do something with a bit of um, bit of pizzazz and something a bit different. So yeah, I, I'm I'm just gonna keep mulling it over, but hopefully we'll we'll be able to do something soon. Yeah, and then after that, of course, out on the road, out seeing these songs played live, man. We look forward to it, and we look forward to catching up with you face to face when we're physically allowed to do that. But yes, uh, right. in the yeah. meantime, man, yeah, you know, best, all the best to you, all the best to the family and the bandmates, all that kind of stuff. Thank and uh, we'll see you soon. All right, man. Love Roxanne, man. Love Roxanne. Always, buddy. Always. All right, Charlie Simpson, everybody.